Hi, this is Glenn Engel, the developer of CrewTimer. In this video, I will give you an overview of the CrewTimer admin interface to enable you to time and configure your own regatta. The place to go to get started with CrewTimer is the URL admin.crewtimer.com. Once you go to that URL, you will be asked to log in with Google and register with CrewTimer if this is your first time. CrewTimer uses Google authentication and does not store or have access to your password. If you do not have a Gmail or Google Apps account, you can create one for free at gmail.com. Once you've completed registration, you'll be directed to the admin interface to create your first regatta. Okay, once registered, if I go back to admin.crewtimer.com, I'll see a list of my regattas. In this case, I have none. So the first step will be to click the plus button here in the upper right to add my first regatta. Click on plus and I'm presented with a configuration screen. First thing that's required is the name of my regatta. Let's call this the first annual 50K challenge. And I'll leave the date as today. We'll leave this as a head race. And all the other uh, properties can be defaulted if this is your first time and you just want to experiment with Crew Timer. Now that I've entered my title, I'll click Save and Save This Regatta. Now the regatta shows up in the list here as the first annual 50K challenge. I have a mobile ID. My access is currently private, which means it doesn't show up on the public Crew Timer results website and I have a head race. The icon here is used to further configure and customize your regatta. If I click on that, I get a number of options. The first one is configure, which takes me back to the screen where I entered the regatta title. This one will show the results for the regatta. This one allowed me to tweak results either during or after a race. And this one will reload lineups from a spreadsheet. This one will clear any race data that's been accumulated. For example, if you are testing crew timer and you want to erase all your data and start for real. And this one will completely delete the regatta. Both of these last two have a confirmation dialog to prevent accidental clearing or deletion of your data. If I click on the results link, a new browser tab will open showing my results. In this case, I don't have any ongoing data, but it, it read data from the spreadsheet and formatted it for the results page. If I go back to the configure link, you'll see that it has a URL down here for a Google spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet is what defines the contents of the regatta in terms of bow numbers, event numbers, participants, and so forth. If I click on open URL, I will see that I'm looking at a spreadsheet that is in view only mode. This is because this spreadsheet is owned by CrewTimer. If you want to modify this spreadsheet for testing or evaluation of CrewTimer, you can come up here and say File, Make a Copy. If I do that, I can name it something appropriate. In this case, I'll just call it the Lens Crew Timer Head Race. I will save that. And now I can customize this regatta. For example, I can change the name of this first crew to instead of being Green Lake Crew, I can change it to Blue Lake Crew. And this will have a different abbreviation. And we'll leave the coxswain name the same. In order for CrewTimer to utilize this spreadsheet, I will need to share it with CrewTimer. Currently, if I hover over this share link, you'll see that it's private only to me. To share it with CrewTimer, I'll first click on the Share button. I will click Get Shareable Link. Then here, I will select the drop down list. And I want to say anyone with the link can view this. I will copy the link. Here is in the copy buffer. Now I will switch back to Crew Timer. 
on the configuration screen, we can change this URL to be the one that we just copied. Paste that in. Click Save. And now if I go back to the results spreadsheet, we'll see that this will update in just a moment with new data after we come here and say click refresh lineups. There we go, already changed, Blue Lake Crew. If we go back to our spreadsheet and we change this to something like uh, let's call it the Red Lake Crew. And change the abbreviation. And we'll just leave everything else the same. If I come back here, once again, if we come back and say refresh lineups and go back and look at the results page, we'll see that the name of the crew has already been changed. So to update the lineups, which affects the results as well as the tablet app, which I'll describe later. All you need to do is change your spreadsheet, come over to Crew Timer, say Refresh Lineups, and then look at your web page, and it's been updated. Now, this spreadsheet can be populated from a download from Agrata Central in their boat.xls format. It can also be updated from Regatta Master. Uh, or any other type of spreadsheet download that you have from your regatta management tool. The important thing is the header names that are shown here. CrewTimer also supports header names that are found in these other programs I mentioned, such as Regatta Master and Regatta Central. If you go to this data dictionary link, you can see other options for aliases for these particular columns. While these other columns shown in black are optional, they do help populate the crew timer results page with more interesting data, uh, including the, the stroke and the Cox name. The abbreviation shown here is used on the mobile tablet to give information about the crews that are in an abbreviated form. If an abbreviation isn't present, an abbreviation will be constructed using the first letter of each name of the crew. So let's see how it works with setting up a tablet now that we have our regatta in our crew timer admin interface. I'm going to switch over now to a tablet. Here you see a tablet running crew timer mobile. When you first start crew timer mobile, it starts in a seat racing mode which is unconnected to the web. In this mode, you can do quick scrimmage regattas, seat racing, and other very simple regatta timing. However, to connect it to Crew Timer in the cloud, we'll configure some settings. We'll go to settings and we'll say enable crewtimer.com integration. Now we will enter a mobile ID, and for the mobile ID, I'm going to enter the mobile ID that's shown here on the web page. In this case, it's njrv.ccahr. So let me type that in. njrv.ccahr. And the mobile pin is an identifier that's in the configuration section of your regatta. So if I go here to configure, You'll see I've got a pin of 66761. This is the pin chosen by Crew Timer when the regatta was created. You're welcome to change it to another number if you like. 66761. Okay. Now, when I return from the settings screen, the mobile app communicated with Crew Timer Cloud, retrieved the lineups from the cloud, and then is presenting them in this lower section of the app. For full information about how to use the mobile application, you can see my other YouTube video on CrewTimer Mobile. But just to demonstrate quickly how the integration with the web works, let's change over to our results page. 
And here I'm going to say add a split. So I've now got a time of 1444.37. And I'm going to assign that to bow2. And you'll notice that the website immediately changed, showing that this race is in progress and the time of this particular bow number. So if I change that to bow1, by adding a split, bow1, let me add two more splits for bows4 and 3. You can see that the website updates pretty much simultaneously with changes in the tablet. Now if I change the tablet over to finish times by pressing and holding start, and selecting finish, I can start entering finish times. So let's say bow two, just crossed the line, bow three, bow four, bow one, finish last. So we'll assign those bow numbers to three, four, and one. And you'll notice already the website has been updated with these results. The finish order for first, second, and third place is now bow three, bow four, bow, bow one. This is a pretty quick race, only 24 seconds for the winner. And if I'm an official, I can say, um, this all looks good, but oh, there's a penalty on bow two. Um, now let's, let's make it a penalty on bow three. Bow three has got a penalty, so I'll press and hold it, and I'm going to select a penalty of, uh, let's say they missed a course buoy. Of course, these penalties can be configured in the web interface, which I'll show you. Click OK, and now you'll see the results have been updated already, and bow three moved down to third place. If I'm a referee, I can say this looks good. Let's call it official. And uh, before I mark it official, you'll note on the website that it's listed with provisional times. Now, when I press the official button, the website will change to official, and that mark that race can be then. Um, have its medals handed out to participants. So that's a brief overview of the integration with the crew timer tablet. Um, the other thing you can do, of course, is you can change your lineups. Let's say race two hasn't started yet. And uh, let's see, I'm going to uh, mix this up and say we had a problem with bow numbers, and this was really 5A. And this one is going to be uh, bow 23. I'll save that. And I will come over here to crew timer and say, let's refresh the lineups. Now the lineups have been read. If I go to the results page, you'll see, well, event two has got uh, some odd number, bow numbers, 5A and 23, but it's ready to go. Now back on the tablet, you'll notice that it also has updated the lineups to show bow 5A and 23 for event two. Now, if you change a bow number uh, for an event that's already been had its time recorded, uh, that um, does not propagate through the system. But any event that doesn't have a start uh, or a time assigned to it, you're welcome to customize it with your spreadsheet before the event has started. So what else can we do back here on the configuration page? Let's look at that a little bit more under configure. So I mentioned briefly that there's a public and a non-public visibility to a crew timer. When this box is checked, your regatta will show up on the www.crewtimer.com site and can be found by anybody. I usually recommend checking this a couple days before your regatta so that people can see lineups. When this box here is checked, the finished box, that means your regatta is over and done, everything has been reconciled, and you don't want to have any more updates to your regatta. When this is clicked and checked, any mobile devices that attempt to make updates to your regatta will be blocked and will get an error. That prevents accidental updates from tablets after you've finished your regatta. For handicaps, there are several modes. There's no handicaps at all. There's manual, in which case the time for the handicap is specified in your spreadsheet. And there's U.S. rowing handicaps. If an age column is specified and you've selected U.S. rowing here, then Crew Timer will assign handicaps according to 
the schedule provided by U.S. rowing. The handicap multiplier is used to indicate the length of your race. For example, the, the standard handicaps are for 1K races. If you have a 2K or 5K race, you would change this to 2 or 5 respectively. Other options that you have are to add custom penalty codes. So if I want the buoy penalty to be something other than 10 seconds, which is the default, I can say buoy colon 30. And I might say something like, uh, let's say the bridge span. If you go through the wrong span of the bridge, that's a 20 second penalty. I can also add information that's shown on the results page. So I might say uh, stormy weather, high winds, just for this information. You could also say something like uh, regatta delayed 30 minutes. And uh, you can also specify additional timing waypoints, which I will speak to in a moment. So let me save that. If we can look at our results page now, we'll see that this little note showed up here. Right, let's go back to the Crew Timer admin website and look at waypoint configuration. On the configure screen at the bottom is a choice of waypoints. Waypoints are optional timing points in the regatta that are for informational purposes. So you can make these descriptive. Say one is at uh, the point and the other is at the bend. Could be something like bridge or pair as well. Once I save that, if I look at the results, we'll see that additional columns have been added into the web interface showing the other waypoints. And from the mobile device, you can change waypoints just like we did between start and finish and select these points for timing purposes. So that's the brief tour of the Crew Timer admin interface. You see that it's fairly simple. It's a, it's a uh, two step process. You create a spreadsheet with your regatta. You come to Crew Timer, create a regatta, load the lineups, and you're ready to go. I would encourage you to also look at my other video, Crew Timer Mobile, which goes into detail about how to use the Crew Timer Mobile interface.